after I say your name, I'm, you're gonna say like. Hola. Yeah. <laughs> Bienvenidos al Abierto de la Baja. Hello and welcome to the 2023 Abierto de la Baja, the first stop on the Mexico Disc Golf Tour of 2023. We got round two MPO action featuring yours truly, Joey Tamale, and the six-time world champion, Paul Macbeth. Hello, and thanks for having me, Joey. We are here on Saturday in beautiful Rancho El Camino. We have Paul Macbeth leading the tournament after round one. Shooting nine under yesterday. Ten sorry, under. ten under. We have myself uh, shooting nine under yesterday. One stroke off the lead, and then we saw him yesterday. Jeremy from NorCal joining us as the threesomes this week in MPO because we had a smaller field. Yeah, and we got uh, what is it? We got tea times actually. Yeah, we got tea times. This is Saturday, so this is an early one. This is like uh, I think this is an eight a.m. round. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was actually pretty cool how they were able to do that with the tee times because it was a small field on the pro side that we just had, I think, four threesomes or five threesomes out there. Uh, we just kind of went off it. We all started on one at 10-minute increments, um, and it really uh, it really just allowed everyone to get that feel of starting on hole one and getting your round going that way. Um, I just think it's cool that they, they implemented that here. Yep. And uh, I went the zone off hole one, as you saw. It was a little bit long, but uh, you kind of got that backstop. But you know when you hit that, you're going to have a an awkward footing. For sure. You just don't want to miss short. So me, I'm doing the same thing here, making the miss long. I've got a couple uh, rubber discs in the bag. You're going to see me throw in a couple elevation discs and a divergent disc. Uh, I chose those mainly because of the terrain out here. Uh, I think they sit better on the rocks and the slope, and I think they get a little less dinged up than your regular plastic disc. So I'm going to be looking for those a lot today. Jeremy just going right at oh, it. Gosh. I did not realize at the time that he almost aced that. That was close. And as you can see, the yellow staff shirts are out again. There's Luis and his brother, Beto. Um, they're going out to go spot some other holes for the other groups and, and help everyone just move along. Uh, smoothly and we got johnny right here you know it's funny for being in the desert we got some sweaters on at 8 a.m <laughs> yeah we did get one of the rare cloudy days as you can see up there um and when when you're in the desert there's not much holding the heat in no so uh that dry air can change temperature very quickly let's see first putt out of the car definitely not i'm pretty sure i warmed up before this <laughs> let's see oh, oh it doesn't matter a little soft and left, but uh, here we go with the awkward footing, standing on these, I don't want to call them hillsides, but uh, yeah. <laughs> standing in the rocks. Um, this is actually the only part that's kind of got some jagged rocks. It's kind of cool. I like it. I like it because they're so small. Um, but yeah, that was, a, that was a fun putt to knock, uh, knock, uh, knock down right there on the first hole. You're tapping in your par, and Jeremy's very Jeremy's close parked. for his birdie. Oh, and as you can see, this uh, shirt he's wearing, I'm pretty sure it's, is it Thailand? Okay. Uh, but one of Jeremy's things to do is he likes to travel to countries and uh, play disc golf courses. He wants to be, he wants to be the most traveled disc golfer uh, ever and play the most PDJ tournaments in different countries. I'm sure there's a lot of people that, that may have tried to do that, mm -hmm. um, but I think Jeremy's got on a new level with his bag. If you see his bag, it's covered in patches yeah. uh, from all the all the events he's played. A nice adjustment by you from day one out here on hole two. I think this actually now with this long tee that they put in after we left, this might be one of the biggest elevation drops on the course. Oh, hole nine bounce. also had that has that same characteristic. I'm also looking to straighten out my shot from yesterday yeah this is it's just so cool how they added these tee boxes um and i'm sure as they continue playing they're gonna just keep pushing these further up the mountain until they don't want to walk back anymore and i'm sure they're gonna make some new holes because not only when we installed the disc golf course we showed them how to do it so they can make basket adjustments they can move 
baskets, tea boxes. They can do all that they want. So I'm sure each time we come, they're gonna they're gonna have little tweaks and changes to the course. There you go, on the board. There's little Eduardo back there. Mm-hmm. He was a oh trooper and walked some of the holes. Yeah, his parents came all the way from uh, from Guadalajara. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, you can hear him cheering us on. No Raz for the McBeast. <laughs> I feel like that's my putt on this course. Nice little full stretch straddle putt. And a little star frame for your lead card, as we should be doing out here. It's a good. Oh, actually, you're getting corrected lame, again. It is not a star frame. So <laughs> <laughs> it is the triangle frame from mm -hmm. what Jer Jeremy was describing. He said, in order for it to be a star frame, you have to have five players on the card <laughs> for each point. So I had never heard that before, but it makes sense. All right, here we are, hole three, another super tee. These first three holes all have new long tees, and Paul sailing again. I'm just getting ready for the new basket placement. I will say it's a bit of a risk on every hole being the first up because these holes do change direction so much on which way you're throwing that it really can be an advantage to not have the box and watch the wind. I certainly, for one, felt like I did get some wisdom off of both of those shots going into my throw here. Yeah, and, and if you watch day one coverage, you notice it was, I'm going to call a north to south wind, and now we got the south to north wind, which is pushing them. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Um, it is pushing them over the basket and, and long left versus kind of slamming them down a bit. But mm -hmm. uh but like you were saying in round one, every hole this wind can shift. So it's really like you can't even trust what you thought you knew from the last hole. And you've been getting good at practicing this putt, huh? Yeah, these are... Uh... Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> these that was are... released on a spike hyzer. Yeah, they are really fun. Because I, I knew if I hit the top, I still wanted it to roll over and not be stuck on the top. Oh, almost, almost a great putt. But, uh, yeah, it was... Uh... It's it's fun. I mean, look at that that like wall it. behind you. Mm -hmm. Definitely twice as tall as me. That rock. So, I'm all, I'm all, I'm okay with the par there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you miss your spot, you have to be okay with the par because you have no choice. Like you don't you don't get looks. You don't get comfortable open looks at this. So here we go on to. Hole four, the double ace hole from yesterday. Gabe on coverage, myself a few holes behind. Uh, this was the disc I threw. Essentially the similar shot. This time I think I went a little wider. Uh, what's that disc called? That's the Divergent Golem. That's one of the rubber discs? Mm -hmm. That's okay. one of the rubber discs. This is called a Discraft Zone. Oh, really? It is and not what's made, that of made out of rubber. <laughs> it is not made of rubber, but it is thrown the exact same way you just threw yours. And that is parked. Nice shot. That's probably one of the hardest things to do on that hole is to get it to sit right there without going into this flat area to the right of the basket. Yeah, this one actually, the, the landing zone is past the basket, so you almost have to run it for an ace. But then if you uh, do push that too far, you got about a 10-foot drop behind the basket. Um, some would call it a death putt, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, you're going to have to climb down those rocks away. Uh, so I love the risk reward on that on that putt. And a lot of these perched baskets really make for some amazing views, especially considering you know this course is definitely a destination course, a fun course, an adventure course. You know that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the views. You're looking for the experience, and that's sort of what you're getting. I'm going back to the golem here. Another standstill, little forehand, very similar shot for me on the last hole to this hole. Yeah, the real trick is kind of just adjusting the height because mm -hmm. the hole before, you kind of throw it high and let it stall. This one, you can't do that as much. You kind of got to go a little bit more direct because if you do let it stall, it's going to end up by the big cactuses upright or behind that rock wall right there, or the rock pile, I should say. And uh, it makes for not only tough footing, but a really hard angle at the basket. You do want to leave it a little bit shorter left. And I think... Uh, yeah, Jeremy's going to... Oh, he got a good bounce there. Oh, yeah. He was going to show us what it looks like to be behind, be behind those rocks, but uh, got a nice bounce there, and he should have a easy look at birdie. 
Oh, B. That's not nice. Look at this. Way short. Misses the putt. Oh, it slid out the back. I thought I just got super lucky. Nope. Not today. Here we go. There's that rock pile to the right I was mentioning. It still just blows me away how big these rocks are. But, uh, Easy twos for you guys if you put it nice and close. That's the reward you get. I think for me, I think on some of these holes, if they were normally this short, I would be thinking a lot about just parking it. And I have to remind myself to like remember my misses and be like, okay, this is the side you want to be on here. This is make sure you do this. Just like don't like passively think about each shot as a 200 and something foot hole. And you can see like you weren't off by that much on that oh. shot and you catch one like you don't get to just clip a leaf and nick through it and be fine you yeah you get what, caught. Is, what is it the iron leaf yeah oh they're everywhere here oh he's pushing it right past the camera Ooh, that that's should gonna be, be tricky. interesting yeah but yeah like with my shot i was just a degree off and uh most places i would just fight through those little leaves and branches but here you, you get stuck and hung up to where Looks like you definitely got the turn on it. Yeah, I definitely wanted to make sure I committed to the flex. A little bit deep, it looks like, but I did get it right enough. Yeah, so you should have a solid look at it. Mm-hmm. And you're left with, what would you say, 35 feet, 40 yeah. feet maybe? Yeah, circle two for sure. Um, and I'm not in a pokey bush, which is nice, so I can stand in it and keep my distance and not have to go behind it. You know, the funny thing you think about with those feet, Ooh, nice oh, putt with those feet in the bushes. It's one thing to get your foot in there to mark it, but then you have to realize when you squat down for your straddle, you're moving, <laughs> and that's the thing that you forget. It's not like it's not just getting your foot in. It's like you have to move your whole body like a foot in each direction. And sometimes if you don't do your warm ups, you go back for your real putt, and all of a sudden you do your full straddle squat, and then you hit the thorn on your back that you didn't feel, and you're, then you miss it. You're getting poked. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Another potential for another triangle frame as we'll go from here on out. Mm -hmm. um, what's the, what are you dealing with right here? Not sweaty much hands. obstruction. Yes, yeah, sweaty hands. Got the whale sack. All right, there we go. Three birdies right there. Moving on to the deadly island hole. This one can bite people. This the island one, hole. Like we said, you put it close, feeling great. Not so close. It's a bogey, and the miss is just not getting it high enough. That That's, like, the easiest way to miss this island. It's pretty easy with the stock standstill, forehand spike hyzer. Looks like you're going with captain the cap raptor. wrap. The captain rafter, just fight that wind again. Oh, that looks good. Oh. And that's just fine. Interesting putt. They're always interesting. Yeah. No easy putts on this one. Sizzling Saigon Winter Open. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Thailand. I could be wrong, though. That one snuck on the green. And here you go with the... Back to the golem. The golem. You can see your eyeball on that wind off to the left, trying to get anything to read. And Any little bit of I read. didn't throw it good at all. Too low, too wide. Hit the branch. Yeah. Drop zone. Are you running it from the drop zone? I don't remember. I think I did. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. If I was laying it up, it would already be out of my hand. <laughs> it is trimmed up a little bit more than I remember. What is this? 45, 50 feet? Maybe. Oh, just low. Can you tell I Could didn't want to go long? You. Yeah, you were keeping it short. Oh, uh, yep. I think you answered your own question. Here we go, Jeremy for birdie. Oh, <sighs> no. That's not one you want to miss. Taking the four, getting out of there. You don't really want too many of those during your round. Yeah. Out here, for me at least. I would like to uh, keep it to pars and birdies if I can. And you're going to be picking up two strokes, doubling yep. your lead to four. Jeremy taking a par. 
which is actually kind of a unique score on this hole. I don't think you see a lot of pars. You either make the island and birdie it, or you miss it and for it. Yeah, I feel like, too, if there's pars, they're coming from miss putts on the mm-hmm. green, and, and that's not what you want to be doing. Not many are being made from this drop zone, even though it is so tempting. Look at that. Get it up. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Hole number eight. Going up the hill. Going with the zone. This is one I feel like if I just put it online, I should be getting a putt every time. But there is. Oh. I got pretty close. But there is that rollaway factor that you mentioned earlier. Um, you hit one of those rocks, and it could be taken off. Oh, there's some of the junior players right there. Spectating. You got Saeed, Melanie, Kimberly. Yep. They were uh, they were competing in some of the younger divisions. Who else is back there? Some of our uh, those are some of the ranch youth who come out from yep. the local communities. Jorge, so those three right there, Kimberly, Melanie, and Jorge, our brother and sister, and then Saeed is, oh my, Saeed is uh, Lazaro's younger brother. Right. All very talented players. Look at this view. Oh, bag falling in his putt. Yeah, look at that view, man. Not what you'd expect to be seeing in the de- in the middle of the desert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. They call it... I mean, it is the desert. They don't just call it the desert. But the last two times you and I have been have has been in the winter for us, which is kind of the mellower temperatures. So we're only getting up to about 85 degrees but when we designed the course in, in May of 2021, that's when we got those triple-digit uh, intense days of heat. Uh, and that's when you really want to make sure you're drinking water, even though you want to drink water at all times on this course. You're still in the desert, even though it's the winter, but it doesn't feel quite as brutal. We can wear pants without regretting our decision. Yes. Yeah. And now we continue the trek up to hole nine. Yep, and uh, coming down this hill, <clears throat> can't say it enough, it's just so beautiful out here and seeing these views and, and being up on this mountainside, and we're not even a third of the way up this mountain, um, so if you ever do go, make sure you climb to the top and throw some discs down at these baskets, because that's what we did after each one of these rounds, is we climbed to the top and just started throwing discs down and, and trying to get one of our longest aces of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely fun. From the top of this little hill, you can... Uh, you can see probably five or six different baskets, and you can just kind of pick them out and throw them, throw them down there. You see me also going here with the Firebird, hanging it out wide. A little too wide. A little too wide. It looks like it's 25 feet. I can guarantee you, without even seeing that lie, that it's going to be nothing. Here we go, Jeremy. And that looks to be pretty right at it. Stop. Oh, yeah. Hits the brakes immediately. Yep. yep. <laughs> There's open. a little window. Wide open. No, it's about as good as you can do. And here we go, looking at a birdie. But you can see how close these branches get, even yeah. into this green. And, and what I like about these trees is they don't grow super tall to the sky. So it makes it for really interesting greens because they're in your way no matter what. Um, you know, they grow kind of. Left to right versus straight up into the sky. I just got stabbed. Ads, bro. <laughs> there you go. You need to check check your surroundings a little bit more, Joey. Oh man. But a little score update. Eighteen down right now. Feels nice. As we enter Yeah. I mean it feels Through twenty seven holes. <laughs> but as we enter the back nine, um Definitely gonna try to get more more of these. Um than I did round one. I feel like I, I left a couple out there. And the wind is down this morning. It is down. But it is still present. Still present, but definitely a little less to think about on each shot. Jeremy's going for this flex line. A little less of a spike hyzer, a little more right at it, but still over the top. Yeah, I feel like he's going with more with a distance driver for it, too, just to hit that shape versus worrying about the power. And I mean, there's the result. That was a very nice... I don't think I ever put one that close all week. 
That was beautiful. Well, can Joey Tamale step up and prove himself wrong? I have no idea. <laughs> that what, would be sweet. What are you going with here? Cayman? This is a champion Cayman. Nice and high. And oh, pretty solid Lord. result. Yep. All right. Just inside the circle. Last trade to beat. And honestly, when you have a putt like this, you can't complain because the last nine holes you've had similar putts with thorns in the way yeah but this is like now you step up to this putt and you're thinking okay i finally have an open one this is the I first time i've done a straddle this, stance in a, yeah standard stance and yeah. i need to make this and now you're just thinking and thinking and thinking but that doesn't matter to you no <laughs> also i like your hat thank you yeah sponsored by uh, our channel here mx disc golf he uh had some sweet gear on site so uh so thought it was only fair to uh show some support yeah, wear the nice just, hat did you wear that round one obviously dude i don't know i think i just wore it round two i switched okay. up my hats every round okay yeah i wore uh the mx disc golf hat round one it's kind of like an olive green yeah yeah i, I it like went very color. nicely with your outfit i thought i really liked that one yeah. goes well with my jacket but i took it off got a little warm and uh wait we're we're doing pretty good out here definitely we talk about the challenges out here but you know at the end of the day it's still still a pitch and putt course for high level disc golfers and so the birdie is definitely there for the taking and look at oh what did you hit i missed the mando oh that was the top yep okay and jeremy Oh, wow. Misses the Mando as well, though. Did you see that, though? It, like, Almost hit it and then, top. like, spun back off the top. Yeah. With the new rule. This is me not knowing the new rule, the by new the way. The new rule is if you touch the line, it is a Miss Mando. Um, so even though Jeremy sat on top of the post and then fell back on the other side, he did, in fact, miss the mandatory by doing so. And here you are taking advantage. Trying yeah. To gain, trying to gain... At least one, potentially two strokes. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I don't even think about this green. There's a lot of danger, but I focus just on the Mando itself because if I think about trying to land short, I feel like it it affects my ability to hit that Mando cleanly. So I throw that rubber arowana from Elevation Discs to put on the brakes. And you can see it is makeable, but it's this little kind of pushing hyzer putt that challenges those branches. Oh, and you can see I almost rolled OB, too. Mm -hmm. And here's, here you are taking two strokes back just like that. Just like that, getting back on track. Oh. And, and the friendly gesture, gentleman. and you don't even t no need it. <laughs> and then yeah, here it's just don't like listen to me. To clarify yeah. this, it, because it is hazard, you don't get a meter or anything like that. You play it where it lies, and even if you are inside, you can stand in the hazard with no penalty. Unlike OB, you are not allowed to stand in the OB at all. Um, so that's why you had that kind of awkward footing right there. But mm -hmm. still knocked down his, his putt to to take his four. And on to maybe, I don't even want to say this is the tightest green on the course, but it feels like the tightest green on the course. These little spike shots. Yeah. Oh, that's not, that's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. I yeah. am very satisfied with that shot. I would say that's like a one and mm -hmm. six or seven on that throw, just because of the way that the wind and the bounces can play. And actually, what I what I really like about this course is there is a gap down the middle to where when you play courses like this, if you're going out there just to practice and, and you know, make your skills better, you can step up to this hole and throw down the middle, mm -hmm. you know, and it gives you that window to where you can make it a really technical hole and just avoid the big hyzer. But if you're trying to score, you're throwing the hyzer uh, just because it's probably the one that will give you the best opportunity for a birdie, but it's not going to help you long term with your game so i think they have a course here that's really going to help them develop as players nice putt from jeremy yep. great birdie right there um, and let's just this is a beautiful testament to the dif difficulty of these greens look at paul Macbeth in here folks yeah, i'm not far away but like you can't even find a line to get your disc out no this is actually more of a pokey bush but uh if I went behind it, I had no opportunity. So I figured if I got in there, I could kind of just 
force the disc out. Maybe there was there is a window here. You can see I'm, it's just not right in front of me. So I kind of just kind of got to trust my wrist here and uh, my, pretty much my forearm and elbow. And that's about the only movement I get from inside this bush. Oh, man. That was actually a pretty solid run, I thought. Yeah, touch more height and I would have stole a birdie right there. Uh, but it's easier to birdie when you throw drives like that. Yeah, and those are uh, never common out here. I mean, if you're throwing the disc well and you get putts like that on every hole, it's going to be a pretty straightforward round. But I did like what you said about the tunnel shots existing, and that is the case even on the next hole here, hole 13. Uh, you have that high over-the-top forehand line, uh, but if you want to work on your backhand touch game, you have this kind of turnover at the beginning. It's a little force over, uh, and then from there it becomes a pretty straight backhand. But obviously the scoring play is over the top. Yeah, a little <laughs> wide there, which you're going to be probably 45, 50 feet away. Given that look, because you're kind of curious if you are going to have a a putt, a putt, you know, with good footing or not. Uh, Jeremy going with the forehand as well. And I. Great uh, line, a little short. He's going to have an open putt, but probably a little bit further than he wants. And uh, I'm looking to make an adjustment, remembering what happened round one. I'm just going to throw the same line, probably take a little bit of power off of it. Worked out. And, yep, kind of dialed in a little bit more. <laughs> and, Joey, are you sitting down? Uh, no, it was a little bit of a squat, actually, like <laughs> like a catcher's squat. That was the only <laughs> way I could hit this little tiny gap. I was so happy I got it that close. Great putt from Jeremy. Two birdies on this hole. It's real solid. Yep. Um, and uh, We're not even going to wait for my tap out because I took too long to get out of that bush. <laughs> <laughs> and we're heading on to the biggest hole on the course, the Eagle Opportunity, hole 14. We're going to see three attempts at a look for off the tee. Big turnover. And I just realized it says uh, four. It say four fifty six or four sixty. Four fifty six. Four fifty six. But it does play uphill, and I think four fifty six is in a straight line to the basket. As you mm -hmm. can see, we're kind of throwing big turnovers because we gotta play up the hill before we can start attacking it because of the the height of these bushes and trees. Um, you can't just go straight up over the top right away. And you're throwing your uh, ESP Zeus, yep. and this is the turn that you're looking for, guys. But, yeah, a little good. short, but great line overall. That's going to be a long look. Yeah, and you can see the stall at the end because of that height that we do have to throw right off the, right off the bat right there at the beginning. Um, and here you go, big foot fault. I was wondering. Why. <laughs> I don't know tree. how you did that and threw it so normal. Well, it's it's because it's like on the after of my throw. Like after I rip all the way through, then my front foot like pivots onto the... Yeah, dude. Just I just looked look like nice. you threw off the wood. It was uncomfortable. It still got yeah. the power off. Oh, roll? Yeah, here's, uh, here's Jeremy. He actually... He took, it, he took some distance back from his... Yes, because he did go OB. Mm -hmm. So he was able to just bring it all the way back to the opening with the new OB rules. There was my eagle bid right into a small little bush cactus thing. It's putt for par, just wide. And Joey looking at the eagle. We had this little branch in our way. Oh, oh man. Trying to take one right there. You can go ahead. I'm gonna... Yeah, you got it. Overall, though, I'd say for both of us, we're pretty happy. We had two good drives. Yeah. Looks at Eagle. I actually had about a 20 footer in the first round and made it. So that was probably my best hole of the weekend uh, but definitely not disappointed with a three here and i told you to go ahead because this is a pokey bush and i didn't want to lose my distance here so i was going to take my time getting in there you don't want to take out. that relief back because no. it's so close and because it's so wiry too like those bushes are about head height so uh they can really get in the way and as you see like when the disc hit them they stop or mm -hmm. they bounce around so you can't really putt through them if you take your casual relief you might be looking at a turbo putt instead of your like obstructed six foot straddle exactly hole 15 tricky little hyzer here 
Yeah. You can go OB long, you can go OB left. There's sort of an area of hazard in the middle, uh, and the basket is elevated. So the play is this big swinging spike hyzer, and that's actually a really nice shot from you. Yeah, Looks like it look. might be inside the circle. I'll be close. We'll see if I have a look for birdie. And here you are making the adjustment because you said you go long in this one. So that one looks oh, like it's carrying deep that, too. Is that got the green? Oh, we did get the green. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually dissed down, went to a firebird there just to be able to throw it hard still and clear that hazard. Oh, he's got the little turn. Is it going to get across? Oh, oh, just in the hazard. As you can see how close that is, it's like well inside yes, 15 feet. But we've got all three guys with a look on this hole, and that is pretty good. Let's see. There's one oh, birdie. Oh, got the two. I didn't. I forgot I got this one. I. I, uh. I tend to let it drift left. Joey. Nice putt, guys. I was going to say, I tend to let it drift really far left with this wind. Um. Because it does blow, for some reason it blows the disc so far right to left, even though mm -hmm. it's usually like a headwind. Right. Um, but with all these little river beds right through here, the wind's always swirling, so uh, you kind of count on it blowing. Don't worry, bro. But uh, even though the flag's not moving, you can see it still kind of affected your putt there. Yeah, definitely. The uphill with the footing and the wind, and then all the danger near the basket, scary green for sure. And these cactuses, they said they bloomed just for the tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was definitely funny to hear that. Look at those beautiful red cacti. Usually, like, I know at some tournaments, they'll put flowers at the end of the tea boxes. Here, a little bit more unique. Mother Nature just doing her finest. Going with that Captain Raptor again. Oh, man, you are just lighting it up out there. That is going to be a nice, yeah, easy is, putt for the birdie, and then... This is one of the harder greens. Like you mentioned that one a few ago, a few holes ago. This one is in the running for hardest green on the course. Mm -hmm. And you can see I have just discovered how hard it's about to be. And Jeremy is going to go a little bit left of the basket I would assume that's gonna be a three and here's my putt from about 45 got through that tree though you did go right through that little mm -hmm. gap in the top so oh, oh wow stuck. that's actually a fantastic hey. putt from Jeremy and here we go for my birdie I pre oh almost got the spit out Couple pars here. You can see my face. A little frustrated missing those. Yeah, well, it's just more just kind of like, what are you gonna do when you put it, got another one, huh? you know, 40 feet and you got nothing? It, it can be a little like hopeless sometimes when you're on the struggle bus on this course and you're just not getting clean looks, even though you don't feel like you're throwing it bad enough to deserve yeah. those looks that you're getting. I might just put my name on that bush right there yeah is that paul's bush i think so i i don't i i feel like i have a mental block on this hole and just hit that that bush both rounds even in practice i was struggling that's joey's right there but right now the we've got this head high yeah we got joey's bush in the way and let's see what jeremy's got dialed up for us this looks he went deep round one pretty good wow oh right by me that is a great shot and that's sort of what you want to do on these hillside holes, in my opinion, you're trying to hit up above the basket so that it can come crashing back down. Oh, I, I got to the front side this time. You didn't roll backwards? No, it didn't fall and slide down the hill. But as you can see, there's some cactuses there setting up for a little bit of awkward footing. But still have a have a look at it. Nice putt. Two more birdie looks. Jeremy... How, you can see that bush is like right in our stance, and for him, he had a rock near his lie that could kind of get him up above it with the hand height. For me, my disc is tucked like right behind this bush. Look at that. You're trying everything. You're going to stretch and get as long as you can right now. I'm not the biggest turbo fan, 
So I was trying to avoid that, given how close I was. So I figured if I could just kind of reach my arm through and just like flick my wrist, it would go in. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just it brings out a creative uh, thinker in the disc golfer on this course. It it really forces you to think. Yeah. It's three birds in that hole is really good. Yeah, really nice putt by you, honestly. You don't get a lot of those wide open 25 to circle's edge putts, and to capitalize on the two or three you get every round is, in my opinion, pretty important. Here we are in the last hole, hole 18. You've got your straight Malta play. You're going to see some hyzers from me and Jeremy. Really nice tee pad, kind of throwing out over the riverbed. Telling it to go straight. Got it up in the wind a little bit. Looking for that bounce down, and sometimes they get them, sometimes they get stuck in those little crevasses between the rocks, and I'm going for this kind of wide hyzer play to try to use the wind, and the wind definitely oh, got it here. Getting up in the hillside. All right, those are some uh, some tricky putts there. Very downhill. Jeremy looks like he was going up uh, the middle. A little, a little shorter, but he'll be, he'll be level with the basket. He might have a look at it. Definitely don't want to be down in that hazard creek bed, but we have some interesting little kind of dropper putts because you can see basically the bottom of the basket is covered up, so we kind of have to figure out what type of a... What, what you really don't want to do is hit the top of the basket. Um, and right. if you do, you're going to want a piece of that flag pole for it to stop. Just like that? Yeah, luckily I squared that up, but still had the roll factor potentially in there. Uh, we'll see here in a second. But, uh, yeah, that was kind of... I would have, like, hit, if you hit those skipped bushes, you're gonna up and then just still flew down really there. hard position. <laughs> this is one of those putts... Ooh, I got a big chunk taken out. That's why you, you know, you pick a very select group of discs to come out to these tournaments, at least for me. Yeah, something you're trying to break in. Yep, exactly. Straight flyers. This is one of those putts, though, where I'm thinking, like, do I stick with my normal putt, or do I, because of how nose down is it, do I attempt, you know, sort of a little more of a nose down? I think I've decided to stay with my original putt here. And uh, we still haven't seen Jeremy putt yet, have we? No, just you and I. Oh, a little right side didn't hang on. Joey oh. can't believe it. Maybe put it a little bit more in the middle next time. That's good. You're good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got to get out of the way for the cameras. Clearly, you're out of the way. <laughs> and Jeremy. Very nice. Oh, man. Little did you know you were still in the way. Yeah, here we go. There's the blocking of the basket. <laughs> Still thinking about that putt that you just missed. Mm -hmm. But uh, we both were able to tap out our pars, and here's the scores. I'm sitting at 23, Joey at 18, and Jeremy at 12. Uh, got a little bit of separation between the three of us now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I shot another uh, nine under par to get me to my 18, and you put together a very nice 13 under round with only one four, and uh, very impressive. Thank you. And uh, if you're following round three, it'll be the same three uh, making the lead card for the final day, final round. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. And if you haven't checked it out already, go back and check round one, see how we got this card, and uh, see how, uh, see how, how we... some other people played. Yeah, go check out the rest of the coverage from the first round. And uh, we want to thank Paul Macbeth Foundation and Dynamic Discs for supporting this tournament. Thank you to Paul uh, for being here in the commentary booth with me. Thanks to everybody who did the tournament. And uh, thank you to uh, Dynamic Discs for helping set up the tournament. We will see you in round three.